3 in our perspective drawing lessons. Today I'm going to teach you how to draw shadows in perspective and how to create the basic light pattern on your blocks. If you want to start taping the corners of your paper down to keep it from sliding around, that's helpful. All right, so let's begin. For this lesson, we want one block. So let's go ahead and do our horizon line, a vanishing point. Let's go ahead and begin our block in one point perspective. And this was in video one, if you'd like to review, but I'll just get this done real quick. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a cast shadow that appears in perspective. Now there are very technical ways of getting an exact precise shadow in perspective. However, for the sake of my junior high and high school students, I'm going to simplify this and we're gonna keep this light source in one place down low on the horizon line. So let's put the light source right over here to the right, okay? I'm gonna put another dot right about here on the horizon line. This will represent our light source. We have a single light source. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to imagine where this back corner is, okay? So if we pulled another vertical line right back here, and then we drew our back edge from here, okay? And I'm gonna draw very lightly to determine where this cast shadow is. We need to kind of know where that back corner is so that we can do the next part. Okay, so this light is gonna shine directly at this block and it's gonna hit the back corner of this object. So what I wanna do is come from the light source, okay, and I'm, I'm gonna want to erase this line, so I'm gonna draw lightly, okay? So this is coming from the light source this is not a vanishing point, this is representing our light source. We're gonna hit this back corner, and this is where the cast shadow will appear to come past this object. Notice how it's not coming from this corner, it's hitting this back corner, and so this shadow goes around the back edge of this block slightly. Then we're gonna come from our light source, and we're gonna hit this corner, okay? The light's going to hit this side of the object slightly, and it's going to hit this corner, and then we're going to have our cast shadow right in this area. Let's get rid of these guidelines. The more you do perspective drawing, you need to get in the habit of drawing very lightly so that you can actually get rid of your lines and not still see them. Okay. We can even erase the vanishing points at this point. <laughs> okay, and we know our light source is back here. Now for the basic light pattern. For this shading, I'm gonna use a regular pencil. If you have a mechanical pencil, it's not gonna be possible to turn that pencil light on its side like it is when you use a regular sharpened pencil. So we're gonna to wanna to be able to turn this pencil light on its side to shade. So you'll need a regular pencil, and I always recommend having a good eraser handy. For this, I'll just use an eraser cap. And then I also have a blending stump. If you do not have a blending stump, you can simply use a Q-tip, or you can roll up a little piece of paper and use that to blend your shading. So when we have a cast shadow, it's going to be darkest right up underneath the object. So the darkest part of the shadow will be right underneath this edge. All right, and as we come away from the object, we're going to, in a continuous, smooth shading motion, gently lighten up on the pressure as you get further and further away. changing the pressure of the pencil. 
You also want to shade in the same direction, if at all possible. You want to have a pencil sharpener handy when you're shading. It's best to keep your pencil edge sharp. Here, I'm just going to let this shadow fade. All right, at this time, we can go and use the blending stump. And what a blending stump is, it's a rolled up piece of paper. You can see it's hollow on the inside and it goes to a point. You'll want to use it on its side. If you push down on the tip, you'll end up pushing this tip up inside and it won't be good anymore. So you wanna maintain this point by using the side, just like you turn your pencil lead on the side. Okay. Blending and softening. I'm going to do now is go back and visit it again. Make it a little darker up here. So what's happening is the reason it does this is this is the darkest side of our shadow. So when the light hits back here, this is the area that's receiving the, the least amount of light. The light's actually going past the object here and hitting these surfaces or maybe other objects over here and lightening up, reflecting light back into this area. So this is why we see a change in value as we get further away from the object. You always wanna keep your shadows soft on the edges. So I wanna get rid of this little pencil line. I'm gonna go back and soften the edge here. I can stay a little bit sharper, closer to the object. I can even put a slight cast shadow, barely, barely right underneath the edge of the object on the right side. All right, so this is our cast shadow. So now we're gonna shade the shadow side. This is the side directly opposite from your light source. So what we wanna do is we don't wanna shade this in completely dark because there is light passing by this object and reflecting back on the surface. So the darkest part of this object is actually gonna be right underneath the top edge where the light goes past. This will be the darkest area up here and then as we get farther down, closer to this surface here, the light is reflecting back and lightening up this bottom side, okay? So we have some reflected light down on this bottom edge here. So watch as I fill in this side. Doing the best I can to, to keep my pencil strokes going in one direction. It's okay sometimes to turn right against the edge. Okay, but then quickly switch back to your main direction here. I'm gonna sharpen my pencil. edges 